Hello and to us, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, we've got a custom build here that has no post. So uh, let's turn it on and see what it does. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's really no post. That's stone dead. Right, okay. Not quite what I was expecting, but that's why I always go for first impressions. Uh, I guess we'll get the Antec. Okay, move the power across to the Antec. Power on at the back, power on the front. Still nothing. Interestingly, my energy meter on the wall is telling me that it's pulling exactly one and a half watts. Uh, now, because the computer is actually off-off, it shouldn't be pulling anything. I'm just going to turn off the power supply at the back, and our draw drops to zero. So, okay, so it's possibly not the power supply then. Um, okay, right. So next stage then, we're going to switch back to the original power supply because it doesn't look like that is our problem. So let's hook this back up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to bare boot this computer. So I'm going to disconnect everything. It's a bit of a rat's nest of cables in here. There's no tidying that's been done. However, these are all good quality parts. You know, we've got a gigabyte motherboard. You know, we've got a nice, we've got an Intel processor. What's that? Hello. Oh, well, that doesn't look very good. That's not a good sign at all. All right, okay, that's where our problem is gonna be. Let's, let's pull away from the power supply a sec, I think we've just figured out our issue. Okay, so I've removed the CPU cooler and just cleaned off the CPU just to check what we've got in here. And uh, it's an i3 under there. There was thermal paste. However, it appears that the CPU cooler just wasn't fitted properly. You saw how loose it was when I just lifted it away. And what's happened here is, unfortunately, uh, the, the, the person who built this computer does not know how to fit pushpin coolers. Now, uh, granted, pushpin coolers are a bit of a pain in the ass uh, for novice builders. Um, so how these things work, um, you've got two parts of it. You've got this clear plastic bit and the black plastic part. You place the cooler down on the board and the narrow part of the clear plastic goes through the hole in the board. And then uh, the board rests up against that part. And then what you do is all of these things, these should be rotated clockwise like that. So let's just turn those all around. And then as, I'm, as it's pressed into the board, when I press this down, that black pin comes down through the middle and separates these out so it can't pull off of the board. And that's locked into place now. And then to remove the cooler, we rotate it anti-clockwise and the pin comes back up again. So basically, these pins were all in the unlock position. So even if they had been pushed down, it's possible that they've just worked themselves loose over time uh, because the arrow indicates that they should be turned that way, which is arguably a bit misleading. So. Uh, in any case, CPU cooler wasn't on properly, so this thing's been this thing's probably had next to no cooling on it. So we've got to find out now whether we've got a cooked CPU or whether something else is wrong. Um, so uh, it's interesting that we're getting a zero power out of this at all. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, the CPU is in there with the cooler removed. Let's just try powering that up again. So we've got everything we need. Let's turn it on at the back, and I'm just going to. Uh, use a screwdriver to short the power on signal pins. So the power on connector is down here, um, these two pins here, and we're just gonna short those. And we get absolutely nothing. It's still stone dead. So um, now if the CPU was faulty, I would expect to still get power to the system. I would expect to have power to the system, but no post. The fact that the whole thing is stone dead generally implies to me that the motherboard is dead. But I don't see how a poorly fitted CPU cooler could kill the motherboard. That's the confusing part. So, um, uh, so yeah. However, as luck would have it, I happen to have a spare one of these exact motherboards because uh, I've had it in here for use on testing another computer. 
that is on the Skylake platform. So I'm gonna go and grab my other motherboard and we're gonna swap a load of parts over and see what happens. Right, let's just straight up go for the motherboard swap on this one because that way I can test with all the same components that are in this computer. So, screws out. This build does have all the hallmarks of an inexperienced builder. It's well specced for parts, but it's the little things like, you know, the motherboard screws aren't in properly and stuff like that. So, it it's what shows me that the person who built this, it's not that they didn't know what they were doing, they just haven't built many computers, so they haven't seen all this stuff before. Unfortunately, to a certain extent, there is no, there's no replacement for experience. All right, let's drop in the testing board. So this uh, this motherboard was actually purchased for a um, uh, for another build, which by the time this video goes out, the repair video was probably for that one has all probably already gone out as well. Uh, it was a uh, a custom build that had a dead CPU in it, um, so I bought this board to test with, and it just so happens to be exactly the same one because oh no, it's a slight variation. This one's got a VGA instead of a HDMI. Um, fine, whatever. It's near enough the same. So we are going to need to pop out the IO shield though while we test this. And we'll just refit those motherboard standoffs just so we can screw this in properly. So we're just going to put in a couple of screws just to secure that in place because this thing is probably going to come back out again uh, because I'm not sure if they're going to want to buy it off me because it doesn't have digital output on it although if they have a VGA monitor that's not going to matter. Uh, let's put in their CPU. And their RAM. This is an Intel board so we populate the RAM slots from of high to low, so slot two comes first. Okay, right, let's give it some power. And we'll just perch all reliable on top here. Arctic cooler, just to make sure that the chip, which might be cooked anyway, doesn't get cooked anymore. Okay, that's good. Power at the back. And once again, I'm just going to short that power switch. Oop. Okay, we've got fan spin. Let's plug a, what, a monitor cable in. Okay, and we've got post on my testing screen here. Um, so this CPU works um, and this motherboard works. Um, so we're going to move everything back to the other motherboard again and just do a control test. And if we find that all of that is still stone dead, we know that it's definitely a dead motherboard. Again, I'm not quite sure how an ill-fitted CPU cooler managed to kill the motherboard. I mean, a cooked CPU I could understand, but um, I don't understand why the motherboard is stone dead. Um, but just by good fortune, because I have almost an identical replacement here, swapping it out was easy enough to do. So let's take all this out and do another test. visible damage to the board. Doesn't look like there's been any slippage with the screwdrivers that's gouged chunks out of it. I'll have a closer look at it in a moment once we've confirmed that it's dead, but I can't see any obvious problems. I have suspicion that the builder has gotten really, really unlucky here and just had, you know, I mean, maybe it's a fluke failure. Maybe the CPU was getting just enough cooling because it's a little i3, it doesn't produce a lot of power. It's possible that it was just surviving 
and the motherboard just failed because it's just a Duff motherboard. So maybe it wasn't even his, well, I mean, as I say, it was improperly built, but maybe it wasn't his fault. Maybe it was not the poor build job that caused this failure, who knows? Okay, right, we've got HDMI here, so I'm gonna plug in a HDMI cable. All right, so power on at the back. Oh yeah, we should put some cooling on that, just in case. The CPU will not overheat immediately. It'll be okay for, you know, probably 60 seconds or so, but there's no point in tempting fate. And also having a CPU cooler there just to see that fan spin is just a good indicator on whether the system is actually on or off. So, right, okay, CPU cooler, off you go. Boop. Boop. Are you coming on? Nope, that does not want to start. This thing is stone dead. That's really, that's really uncommon to be honest. Okay, power off at the back. Um, let's try, let's try doing the, the last ditch attempts. The, the, this probably won't work, but we'll do it anyway. Let's pop the uh, BIOS battery out. And let's just clear the um, CPU cooler out of the way. And while we wait for that CMOS to clear, we're just gonna have a really good close look at this board and just see if we can see anything wrong with it at all. I don't think we're going to, but you know, while we wait. No bent pins. The LGA is absolutely fine. And again, just CPU errors don't cause no power. CPU errors cause no post or power cycling or something like that. To have the board be just totally stone dead. The only other possibility is that something was connected uh, that got disconnected before it came in here. One thing that I have legitimately seen before um, is I've seen someone connect uh, the floppy drive connector, the four pin floppy drive power connector to a four pin fan connector before because the floppy drive power connector, although it's not supposed to connect to one of those, does happen to be exactly the same size. And I have seen someone just plumb 12 volts straight into a fan header and they've blown up the motherboard that way. So I wonder if something like that happened and there's just something that I've not been told. But there's no visible damage to this though. There's not always something visible. If it's dead, it's dead, that happens, but you know, if it was, you know, if something had like been blown up or put in the wrong place, then you know, you'd usually see a dark spot or a mark or a scratch or something, but there really is no, there's no hints, there's no clues on this one at all. Let's power it up again and see if we get anything from it. Right, power on at the power supply. Uh, just plug in that fan just so we can see if it's actually started or not. And go. Ah! She lives. Do we get a signal? Let's see if it will give us a signal. We might just have to power cycle that because there was no HDMI, HDMI plugged in initially. There we go, and we've got post. Another computer fixed with a BIOS reset. And look, it was stone dead and a BIOS reset was all it needed. Right, what are you trying to tell us? BIOS has been reset, okay, yeah, we knew that. Fine, okay, I'll take that, I'll take that win. Let's put this thing back together again and see if it'll work back in the computer.
Right, so, thermal paste, pea-sized amount. Probably get a little bit less than that would be fine, but whatever. And now, our CPU cooler. We're gonna make sure that all of these are rotated clockwise, so against the arrow. So, turn all of those clockwise. Yep, those are all fine. And we're going to position it over the top of the CPU, making sure that those pins are going through the holes. There we go. And now I'm going to keep my thumb on top just to make sure that it, we stay centered. And I'm going to press the first pin firmly down, like that. And now, still holding the cooler to keep it in place, we're going to do the opposite side. There we go. And then we can do the other two. And there we go. That's solid in place now. And again, we don't need to rotate these arrows. We don't need to spin these unless we're removing the cooler. You turn the arrows to remove it, not to fit it. Right, and then just to tidy up this cable a little bit, I'm just going to twirl this up. This trick is not necessary, but it just makes the cable look a bit nicer and a bit less noodly. So I'm just literally just gonna twist up this wire All right, so past that we're done. This fella's absolutely fine now. Uh, I need to call the customer and ask them if I can upgrade it to Windows 10 because it shouldn't really be running Windows 7. There's no reason for that. Um, uh, so yeah, we're all finished. So the resolution, in the end, it just needed a BIOS reset. Um, I, it's pretty wild that a dodgy BIOS setting or, or a corrupted BIOS could cause no power like that. No post power cycling, absolutely, but no power, stone dead. That, that's something I've never seen before. But once again, as I've said many times before in these videos, it just goes to show you that do the simple tests anyway. If it's a simple test, just do it because you never know it really might be that simple. This is not the first time that BIOS reset has fixed a really hectic looking problem. This is not the first time that it's been, um, you know, it looks like you've got critical motherboard failure. Hell, I had a new motherboard in this thing and all I needed to do was just pop that BIOS battery out for two minutes and just let the BIOS reset. So thank you very much for watching everyone. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.